And here we are again, still locked up, locked out, and locked over. It is Wednesday, April the 15th, and guess what today is? Tax day. But you know, we all have a great uncle. And uncle said, you don't have to have it done today. Now, if I had known that when I went to H&R Block in February, I would not have given my money right away. But anyhow, be that as it may, I'm cleared for my taxes. That's all done. But more importantly, we're here to at least dis discuss a little bit about church. A couple days after Easter, I had gotten an email from uh, Marianne Squires, one of our parishioners, about something that was uplifting. It had to do with this concert that Andrea Bocelli did in Milan on Sunday. So I hit the YouTube, and boy, it was beautiful. This big, beautiful church, and again, just empty. The only person in there is the organist and himself as the soloist. But anyhow, get this. On Easter Sunday, he had this, how many, guess how many hits he had on this presentation he made. 32,895,46. That's pretty good. You know, I get a couple hundred maybe in doing this little gig here and maybe a thousand or so for church. I got a lot more work to do. Or you got a lot more work to do telling people about this. Now, I'm not saying I can't sing like Andrew Bocelli. If, if you want me to sing, I'll be glad to do it. But you'll probably never watch the YouTube station again. So anyhow, I better stick to my daytime job, which is maybe sharing a thought or two about the gospel. So I want to go back to this concert that he had. It was entitled Music for Hope. And you know, if there was a day and a time in our life that we needed to hope about something, it's in this crazy nonsense that we're in. There's nothing worse than feeling locked up. Just, it's crazy. I mean, just, and not being able to do church for the folks. Oh boy, that's just driving me crazy. And I pray every day that soon this, this disaster, this catastrophe will be over. But in that concert that he gave, Sister told me that the first song that she saw was Amazing Grace. We all know that one. The first one that I heard him sing was Panis Angelicus, the bread of angels. And what makes Catholic Church, or at least our gathering together as God's people, unique and special, is to become to celebrate the presence of the bread of angels. In the gospel narrative today, it's the story of the apostles on the road to Emmaus. Now, poor souls, absolutely poor souls. They had heard rumors about Jesus being raised from the dead, but they were scared, pitless, and they were going the other way, you know. So here they are. They're seven miles out of Jerusalem, and the stranger comes to them. And he starts talking to them about and he opens their minds up to their understanding of the scriptures and then they sit at the table and guess what happened uh oh the bread of angels becomes manifested right to their eyes and their hearts are filled with joy and it took them all day to go from Jerusalem to Emmaus and they get back there at lightning speed you know in 20 minutes they do the seven miles to get back because they're all so excited what's it all about it's about the bread of angels. What does, what, does, what does the Mass mean to us Catholics? It's everything. It's our identity. It's our source of hope. It's our joy. It's our satisfaction. We do Mass for the celebration of the community on Sunday, daily Mass. We do Mass for weddings. We do Mass for funerals. We do Mass for anniversaries. We do Mass for nations. We do Mass for everything. What is it about the Mass? You know, it's about the bread of angels. It's about the Lamb of God that just nourishes and strengthens us in our journey to the Father. And so then let us pray soon that this uh, tragedy will soon end and they will begin to be able to return to the presence where the Lord is manifested to us in the breaking of bread. I was telling Kevin that I try to visit churches during the course of the week and I, I went to a church a couple of miles from here on Easter Sunday just to pay a visit. Couldn't get in. Everything's locked up. 
And I told him on Easter Sunday, I said, I'll be doggone. I said, I'm not going to have the Eucharist unavailable for people. So I went over early Easter Sunday morning, put the Blessed Sacrament on the altar, lit the candles. And, you know, I was in and out of there three or four times during the course of the day, just checking on things. And, you know, anytime I went in church, there were people there. I went back to shut the church down and put the Lord and put them back in his box at 6 o'clock at Easter Sunday night. There were still people in church. In the human spirit, we want to be in the presence of the bread of angels because the Lamb of God is that which satisfies the hunger of our heart. And so as I share this with you today, let us certainly pray that the good Lord will deepen within your heart and mind a sense of a, a longing and aching for the presence of the risen Lord and that this day of the curse will soon be ended and we will gather together in the presence of God's holy people to rejoice in his word and to celebrate again the joy of the Lord, the bread of angels, as the bread is broken and shared and we become again one with God. Have a good day, people. We'll see you tomorrow.